Hi everyone, this is a video that's going to fully review everything you need to know for our solving inequalities chapter, for solving different types of situations with inequalities starting with the easiest to the more complicated. So first one says x minus 6 is greater than 25. This is an easy problem. All we do to get x by itself is simply add 6 on both sides and when we do that we end up getting x is greater than 31. Absolutely no big deal. We are all good to go. Number two, Another one-step problem, this one's also very easy. y plus 10 is greater than or equal to negative 2. Again, I see I have numbers on both sides. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 10 on both sides. So that way I end up with y is greater than or equal to negative 12. Number 3, 42 is less than 6x. Okay. So to get x by itself, I would have to divide both sides by 6. Now something we talked about when we were learning inequalities is when you bring down what you have, you need to make sure you bring down it exactly the way it looks. So seven, uh, 42 divided by 6 is 7, bring down the less than, and then your x. However, our answer choice is we need the variable to be first. So we have to reverse the statement. Instead of saying 7 is less than x, but put x first, it's like saying x is greater than 7. This is the final answer that I want to make sure that I select when my variable is first. I have to reverse it if, if, if it's not already first. Number four, x divided by three is less than 15. We have to say to ourselves, okay, x is being divided by three, so I need to go ahead and multiply both sides by three. And I end up getting x is less than 45. Sounds good, it's in the perfect order that I need it to be. Okay, number five. Number five says negative 35 is greater than negative 5x. Okay, so first thing I need to do is I need to get x by itself, so I'm gonna divide both sides by negative five, divide by negative five. I end up getting seven. Now, here's something special. When you multiply or divide by a negative with inequalities, you have to reverse the symbol. So this greater than symbol is actually going to become a less than symbol, okay? So negative 35 divided by negative five is seven. Because I'm dividing by a negative, I do have to flip my symbol and then I bring down my x. Now, final step, to get the variable first, instead of saying 7 is less than x, it's x is greater than 7. So we actually had both cases of flipping in this one problem. Really important for us to see both of them happening. Number 6. So number 6 says 3 fourths, oops, 3 fourths x is greater than or equal to 12. To undo the 3 fourths, we have to multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of 3 fourths is 4 thirds. When I multiply both sides by 4 thirds, the whole point is you get to cross out your 4s and your 3s over on the left. We are then left with x is greater than or equal to. You do 12 times 4. 12 times 4 is 48. And then you would do 48 divided by 3. And 48 divided by 3 is 16. So I get x is greater than or equal to 16. Okay, number seven says three times five x minus three is less than 21. Okay, so we first have to start distributing. So three times five x is 15 x. Three times negative three is negative nine. Bring down less than 21. I have numbers on both sides. I need to go ahead and add nine on both sides, right? We wanna get the variable to be by itself. I get 15 x is less than 30. Last step, divide both sides by 15. No special, you know, flipping is going to happen here. It's just x is less than 2. Okay. Number 8. Number 8 says translate the following sentence into an inequality. So I have to move my screen. 3 times the sum of x and 2. Okay, so 3 times the sum would be 3 open parentheses, x and 2. That's how you show three times the sum, and sum means to add, is at least, well, at least means greater than or equal to, think about it, at least. You say, I need at least $20. That means you want 20 or more. I need at least an 80 on my quiz. That means you want an 80 or more. So it's greater than or equal to x minus 4. That's it. That's the translating. So 3 times x plus 2 is greater than or equal to x minus 4. Number nine, all right, number nine says 4x plus two 
is greater than x minus 7. Notice I have numbers and variables on both sides. I could technically do whatever I want here first. Maybe I'll subtract x on both sides. I'll get 3x plus 2 is greater than negative 7. Then I notice I have numbers on both sides, so I need to go ahead and get rid of this negative, uh, positive 2 by subtracting 2 on both sides. I end up getting 3x is greater than negative 9. Last step, divide both sides by 3. And negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3. So my answer is x is greater than negative 3. Number 10, 5x minus 6 is greater than 5 times x minus 9. All right, so first step, I need to go ahead and distribute what's on the right-hand side. So 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 9 is negative 45. I notice that this is a little special right now. I see that I have 5x's on both sides of this inequality, and I know that's going to be one of my special case situations. So all right, if I subtract 5x on both sides, minus 5x minus 5x, my x's are now completely gone. I'm left with negative 6 is greater than negative 45. When your variables are gone, you always have to ask yourself, is this true or is it false? Is negative 6 greater than negative 45? Yes, it is. So when it is, it's all real numbers. Now, if it had said is negative 6 less than negative 45, that's not true. And when it's not true, that's when it's no solution. So in this case, it's true. And so it's all real numbers. Number 11, negative 2 times x minus 1 is less than 4 times x plus 3 minus 7. Okay, I definitely have some distributing going on here first. So negative 2 times x, negative 2x. Negative 2 times negative 1, positive 2, is less than 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 3 is 12. And bring down my minus 7. So now this problem is really negative 2x plus 2 is less than 4x. What's 12 minus 7? It is 5. I again notice I have numbers and variables on both sides. I could do whatever I want to first. Let's say I decided to subtract 4x on both sides. I would end up with negative 6x plus 2 is less than 5. Okay. Then I would ask myself, what do I have on both sides now? I have numbers. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 2 on both sides. I get negative 6x is less than 3. Last step, divide both sides by negative 6. Now this is that special rule again. When you multiply or divide both sides by a negative, you do have to flip your inequality symbol. So this would become x is greater than ne 3 over negative 6 is just negative 1 half. So my answer is x is greater than negative one-half. Okay, the next two are all about compound inequalities. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the two inequalities that we're working with and kind of like think about the graph of them. It says the solution to x is greater than 4. So here's 4. And x is less than 5 is. So now all the numbers that are greater than 4 and are less than 5. Because it says and, there's this union. There's the in-between section. All the numbers that are greater than 4 and are less than 5. So my inequality for this, if I put them together, x is greater than 4, x is less than 5, you take the inequality of the smaller number and you reverse it. So you would say 4 is less than x. And then you would tie on the other inequality to it, x is less than 5. This is what this inequality would look like in that form. So 4 is less than x is less than 5. Each one of these, though, is going to be a little bit different. So we have to look at them very carefully. The next one. Oh, sorry, I did not mean to click that. Number 13, x is greater than 4 and x is greater than 8. Okay. And, so here's 4, here's 8. All the numbers that are greater than 4 are here. All the numbers that are greater than 8 are what I just did in blue. Now, and is only about the overlap section. So if I said x is greater than 4 and x has to be greater than 8, 
Notice the overlap is only in this part here. It's all the values that are greater than 8. So in that case, x is greater than 8 would be the solution to that inequality. And is always about the overlap. Next one. The solution to x is greater than 4 and x is less than negative 2. So if I was to make a number line, here's negative 2, here's 4. I'm like, oh, all the numbers that are greater than 4 and all the numbers that are less than negative 2. What I'm going to notice is there's no overlap. And by the way, there's no number in the world that would be greater than 4 and also less than negative 2. So when you get an and inequality that way, a compound one, that would be no solution. It is not possible. So you can see drawing a number line is definitely helpful or just thinking about the numbers in those cases is also a good strategy. Next one, number 15. X is greater than 4 or x is less than negative 2. So x is greater than negative 4. That's an open circle shaded to the right. Or x is less than negative 2. Now when it's or, everything goes. It could be this. It could be that. It doesn't matter what direction it's going in. So this one, it's just x is less than 2 or x is greater than 4. The whole, both little inequalities are good to go for my solution. Number 16. x is greater than 4 or x is greater than 8. Okay, so if I make a number line and I put 4 and 8, x is greater than 4 is open circle shaded to the right, or x is greater than 8. Now, x is greater than 8 kind of got swallowed up by the x is greater than 4. All the numbers that are greater than 8 are already greater than 4. So the x is greater than 8 kind of really didn't matter here at all. The solution to that inequality is just x is greater than 4. It's not about the overlap section. That's when it's only and, or it's whatever is shaded in. Number 17, x is greater than 4, or x is less than 6. Okay, so if I make a number line and I put 4 and 6, or means we just go with both of them, greater than 4, closed circle shaded to the right, and then look at this, x is less than 6 is an open circle shaded to the left. What do you notice about the entire number line? The whole thing is completely filled in, and when that's the case, it is all real numbers. All right, last couple here. Absolute value inequalities. Say greater, greater. When the absolute value inequality starts with a greater than symbol, it's an or inequality. Say less than, less than. When the absolute value inequality starts with a less than, it's an and compound inequality. Okay, so in this inequality, I have absolute value of x minus 5 is greater than 6. Greater, say greater. So that means my two inequalities are x minus 5 is greater than 6, or greater, x minus 5 is less than negative 6. You change the sign, flip the symbol in that second one. I add 5 on both sides of both inequalities to start getting x by itself. I end up with x is greater than 11, or x is less than negative 1. So those inequalities are definitely going in different directions. Um, and so that's my answer. x is greater than 11 or x is less than negative 1. If this started not with a greater than, a greater than symbol and it was less than, it would be an and compound inequality. All right, number 19. Number 19 is kind of special. There's not really much to do here because guess what? The absolute value of anything is always positive. Say that again, the absolute value of anything is always positive. So if this is positive, my answer is positive, will that answer ever be less than or equal to a negative? Absolutely not. These are the best questions when you get an absolute value and you're talking about it with a negative. If it said greater than or equal to a negative, then it would be all reals, all the numbers in the world. But because it says less than or equal, it'll never be less than a negative. It'll never be equal to a negative. And so that one's just a quick no solution. And the last one, which compound inequality represents the situation? The temperature in the classroom should be greater than 68, so that's x is greater than 68, but no more than 74. So no more than would mean that it has to be less than or equal to. No more than. If it's not more than, it means it's equal or less. When I go to put these together, because it's a range in between, I would take my inequality with a smaller number, reverse the statement, 
write it as 68 is less than x, and then simply tie on the other inequality and have it less than or equal to 74. So 68 is less than x is less than or equal to 74, and that is it. I hope this video was helpful. Good luck on your test. Bye. I got 100.